Hi guys, today we're going to talk about what ingredients to use as a substitute for flour in keto baking. We're going to start off by talking about what we're trying to substitute for. So in normal full carb baking, the most important ingredients are usually the gluten and the starch that come in wheat flour, and these are the roles that they play in baking. To start off with the gluten, this is a type of protein in wheat flour. So the gluten is responsible for the majority of the structure in bread baking or any baking that doesn't have eggs in it and even baking that does use eggs gluten is still super important you can see here someone did a test with different kinds of flour that have different gluten content so cake flour has the lowest gluten content and high gluten flour and vital wheat have a much higher gluten content and you can see the difference it makes when they've baked the high gluten flours rise a lot higher and they also brown more so the next component of wheat flour is mostly the starches and the most important thing about this is that when you ferment bread it's a starch that gets eaten up by the yeast and the big problem here means that you can't even use yeast in the majority of keto baking if you're trying to make bread because there's no food for the yeast to eat there's nothing for it to ferment and so you're not going to get that foamy bubbly fluffy texture that you can get with yeast raised breads so the main flour substitutes we use in keto baking are almond flour and coconut flour. And here's a comparison per 100 grams of almond, coconut, and wheat flours. And when you look at coconut, I know you're gonna immediately think that's a super high carb count. There's no way coconut flour is keto friendly. But keep in mind that when we use coconut flour in a keto recipe, we're only summing it in for about five to 10% of the overall flour content. The almond flour usually makes up 90, 95% of it. So here are the ingredients that I use mostly for keto flour substitutes. And oat fiber is another one that more people are discovering recently, and it's a good substitute for coconut flour. Both of these things act as starch substitutes along with the almond flour, but the almond and any other nut flour will act very differently from the coconut and the oat fiber. So first let's look at almond flour, and any nut flour will usually work, but almond is the most readily available and tends to be the cheapest if you're buying it pre-made. And I wanna make a quick distinction between almond meal and blanched almond flour. Almond meal is the whole almond ground up, so that includes the skin. So you can see that the color is a bit different, whereas blanched almond flour are, is made from almonds that have been boiled really quickly to release the skins. The skins are removed and then it's ground down into a powder. This tends to be a lot fluffier because it can be ground down into a much finer texture. So always opt for blanched almond flour when you can. So next let's look at coconut flour. Coconut flour is made from the pulp of coconut and it's ground very finely and fully dried out. A big thing to remember here is you cannot sub coconut flour in one-to-one -one for almond flour. It acts very differently in terms of its absorbency. But you can see here, usually people recommend that you use three times the amount of wheat flour as per coconut flour, and which also works for almond flour subs. So if you're using one cup of almond flour, you would sub in only one third the amount of coconut flour. And when you use it, make sure that you add extra eggs to your recipe because coconut flour is so absorbent, it needs that extra liquid. And coconut flour can also be rather crumbly when you use it in baking. And, and so using extra eggs in your recipe will counteract that and make it hold together better and be less crumbly. Next let's talk about oat fiber, which is not ground up oats. It's not oat flour, it's very different. So when you have an oat grain, the outer covering is the part that is taken off and ground down into oat fiber. Whereas oat bran is the next layer underneath the oat hull and it's high in carbs as well as nutrients. It is not oat fiber. So just be careful when you're buying oat fiber, make sure you don't get it mixed up for oat bran. Now looking at why oat fiber is all right to use in keto baking, it's essentially a non-digestible fiber. It does contain carbs technically because fiber is included as a type of carb on nutrition labels. The same goes for most of coconut flour's carbs. They are also a form of fiber. And I'll leave the links to where I got all of the info in this video down below in the info box. Next up, we're talking about eggs, which are great for helping us make up for the lack of gluten in a recipe. So we talked before about how gluten is one of the biggest structural elements in baking, and eggs do a great job with providing structure as well. Eggs also have emulsifying abilities because of the egg yolk, which is great for holding your batter together and providing a bit more volume and an even texture. Next, we're gonna look at cream cheese, which is often used 
to add not just structure but also chewiness to things like cookies. And the interesting thing is people have found that dairy cream cheese and substitute non-dairy cream cheese work equally well in gluten-free baking when you're trying to get more texture and chew. And most people say this is because if you look at the ingredients of most commercial cream cheese, they have thickeners added like guar gum, xanthan gum, and carrageenan. And you can see this is the nutrition info from, from an American generic brand of cream cheese and they have many different thickeners and that is probably why non-dairy cream cheese can still have the same effect when we use it in baking is because non-dairy cream cheese will usually also have some kind of thickener added like guar gum or xanthan gum. So we'll start off with xanthan. This is produced by, by fermenting different carbs. Next we'll look at guar gum, which is similar, it also stabilizes, emulsifies, and thickens just like xanthan gum, but it is weaker. If you used one teaspoon of xanthan gum in a recipe, you would sub in two teaspoons of guar gum. And guar is made from grinding down a guar bean which is very different from xanthan. Now, the reason these are used so widely in gluten-free baking is the same reason that people use cream cheese. It does a lot of the same things that gluten does. It provides structure, it provides chew, holds things together and makes them much less crumbly and just overall improves the texture of anything you're baking. Next one I want to talk about is psyllium husk fiber, which most of us have heard about recently because it's used very commonly in keto breads that are aiming to get more of that sourdough or rustic bread texture, which is really difficult to get if you're trying to use eggs as the main thickener or stabilizer. Psyllium husk is made similarly to oat fiber, so it's the husk of the psyllium seed that is ground down and is just pure fiber. The big difference between this and something like oat fiber is that, you, as you can see on the right hand side here, if you add water to it, it gels up. Instead of just absorbing the water, it actually forms a gel substance. And if you add enough water and then heat this up, you can see that the texture is extremely elastic, just like gluten. Now, if you have had any luck using psyllium husk fiber in a keto bread recipe, please leave a comment and let you know I'm still on the hunt for the best keto bread recipe. It's really hard to create one yourself at home. I've been through everyone else's different recipes and something always seems to be lacking. Either it's too dry, it's too tough, it's too chewy. To finish off, I wanna ask you guys if you have ever used protein powder in your baking because this is something that's becoming more popular. You can use it in place of some of the almond flour that you're using. Last question is cheese. A lot of people have been using cheeses like mozzarella and cheddar in different bread recipes, especially the breads that have more chew to them. If you have a favorite keto bread recipe that uses cheese, not cream cheese, please leave a comment below and let me know. I would love to try it out. As I'm more dessert oriented in all my recipe testing for this channel, I don't have as much time to dedicate to making these more savory bread recipes. Regardless of the ingredients you're using, one thing to remember with keto baking is that your recipes will usually brown faster on the outside. So we recommend dropping your temperature by about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And because you're using a lower temperature, you're going to need to increase the baking time. So they have an example here of if you are baking for 30 minutes, you'll need to up the time to about 45 minutes and you'll need to experiment depending on each recipe that you try. Before I go, I have an announcement. There is a new keto ebook coming out May 1st. It's gonna be all the single serving keto desserts from TPH's past recipes, all collected into one little cookbook. And if you are a member of my Patreon, then you will get early access to that. And if you are at the $10 patron level or above, you will get it for free. So check out the links below if you wanna check out either of my past ebooks.